Welcome to the Same Day Podcast, where we discuss driving incremental business growth and other topics related to real estate, property management, and entrepreneurship. Now, to the show at hand. Hello, Yoni Schmidt here, hosting today's episode of the Same Day Podcast, where I connect with top business leaders, entrepreneurs, and real estate uh, investors. Past guests include Chip Gabrino, a local restaurateur, entrepreneur, Elliot Nelson, CEO of the McNellys Group, and Morgan Martin, a financial advisor at Merrill Lynch. Today's episode is brought to you by Chris Lyle of State Farm. Chris Lyle State Farm helps you protect your most precious assets and investments. Whether your home or auto, investment rental properties or valuables, call Chris Lyle State Farm for a quick and painless phone call on all of your insurance needs. Uh, today's episode is also brought to you by Kiento Property Management. At Kiento Property Management, we are a full-service property management company helping clients buy, renovate, and operate real estate assets. We help clients build wealth while taking out the headache of owning properties that are being, uh, of course, uh, used as real estate investments. Um, that's why no matter the rental you have, single-family home, condos, townhouses, or apartments have the management solutions you need. Go to kirantropmc.com or email us at info at kirantropmc.com. Welcome to our podcast. Today, we have the pleasure of speaking to Michael Lerner, an enterprise account executive at GitLab. With over three years of experience at GitLab, Michael has demonstrated exceptional skills in deal strategy, customer relationship management, negotiation, and outbound sales. He has consistently exceeded his sales targets and has played a crucial role in driving GitLab success in the software development lifecycle industry. Michael is also a mentor aspiring uh, to aspiring sales professionals and has a rich background in sales, including a tenure at Francis Energy, where he took on both individual contributor and mentorship roles. Today, Michael will share his insights into sales strategies, building strong customer relationships and adding value through sales. Join us for an enlightening conversation on how to excel in the world of sales and business development. Welcome to the show and thank you for being here. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Yoni. Sure. Let's uh, dive right in. Michael, tell us a little bit about um, how did you get to GitLab and what makes it stand out in the software development lifecycle industry? Yeah. Um, so for getting to GitLab, um, I would say that starts even, even before GitLab. Um, I was at Francis um, Energy for uh, two and a half years. Great experience there. Um, I was doing sales in um, electric vehicle charging infrastructure. Um, I liked it. It was a ton of traveling, a ton of on the road. You know, we had a lot of success there um, with just, you know, how that was run and, and, you know, really just fell in love with, with doing sales and, you know, doing the hunting, doing the outbound um, and just, you know, felt like I was, I was really good at it. Um, I knew I wanted to get into software though. Software was this, you know, it just seemed like such a bigger market um, in the beginning, you know, Francis Energy EV charge network, it felt like it was going to, you know, grow really quickly and, and be really big. And, and I do believe that it will be, I think that company is going to do um, really well, but it just wasn't moving quite fast enough for me. So I knew I wanted to um, get into the software side. So um, I did a, like a, a BDR or business development rep, like career accelerator program. Um, and this was probably in the very beginning of 2021. It was right in the thick of COVID um, called Satellite, um, which was which was a great program. And that was essentially, you know, like a, a two months, two-ish months um, accelerator mm -hmm. program where, you know, we deep, dot, we deep dove into topics like, you know, outbound cold calling, email strategies, um, things like that, and really got a lot of knowledge from that. And then from that program, you're paired with like a mentor, uh, my mentor, Leia, um, who was a teammate of mine for a long time at GitLab. Um, it was her, her wife was uh, my mentor, Molly. And uh, she hooked me up with, with Leia, who was a referral for me at GitLab at the time, didn't know much about GitLab, knew I wanted to get into tech, knew I was eager, you know, hungry to learn. Um, and then, yeah, one thing led to another and I've been at GitLab for, for over three years now, have worn a couple of different hats, um, watched the company, you know, IPO and, and beyond and just continue to grow. So Definitely, definitely been a little bit of a blessing. What was this? What was the second half of that uh, question again? Yeah, what makes GitLab stand out um, in the software development lifecycle industry? I mean, but I also wanted to touch on another piece of your answer, the satellite program. Um, what, can you tell us a little bit about that? Were you doing that while you were working at Francis? So it, yeah, it was it was it was after Francis, um, or I guess it was at the the tail end of Francis. Um, it was a it was a it was a company startup 
that basically aim to, you know, ideally add value to companies by, you know, giving BDRs training. A lot of BDRs that come in the raw, they don't, you know, they might not have the confidence. They might not have, you know, the background to just step into a BDR mm -hmm. role um, and, you know, be successful off the bat. So I think the idea there was, you know, you go, you, you know, mentor people, um, equal access, right? So I think a big part of um, their mission was to, you know, democratize who has access to getting into, you know, a tech sales role. Um, so that was a little bit of the idea behind it, but, you know, I joined it. I think I was in the the second ever cohort, um, there and yeah, just re really learned a lot from it. I thought it was a, thought it was a great program. Yeah. Love that. Is it still around and would you recommend it to aspiring BDRs? It's, it's actually, I, I do not, I don't think it's, uh, still around. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Well, m maybe someone should come up with something. Uh, similar to to uh, help aspiring business uh, development and business um, uh, development representatives and managers. Tell us, I guess, a little bit about GitLab. I mean, what makes it, you know, a leading company that stands out in the software development lifecycle industry? Yeah, great question. So what uh, GitLab is, it's a DevSecOps platform um, delivered as a single application. Um, there's also AI infused throughout the entire software development process. We're really the only company who is, you know, having the end-to-end -end SDLC, um, you know, on a single platform. So whether you're issue tracking, CICD, uh, security scanning, um, and then, you know, AI beyond just code generation, you can do really all of it uh, within within GitLab, um, which is, you know, really unique, you know, not having the context switching, you know, having it as a single application is a huge value add for, you know, a lot of our customers. Yeah. Would you, would you break that down in layman terms for those of us that aren't necessarily in the tech world and don't necessarily understand um, much about this, uh, this, this industry, right? So you are in the industry of um, helping, helping clients and helping companies develop their software. Correct. Right. Um, and so the idea is, you know, there's a, there's a lot that goes into, you know, developing, there's developing software, you know, you have to plan your work, you have to write your code, you have to do a build, which is essentially, you know, taking all the software and kind of putting it together. So it all, it all fits together, then you're deploying it, you know, you're scanning it for security, you're continuously monitoring it, all of these stages of the SDLC on their own are, you know, there's, there, there, you know, there's a ton of um, companies, and there's a ton of products that, you know, service each of these. Um, what GitLab aims to do is, you know, be a single platform for all of it. And then you add an AI. So obviously, you know, the a super popular one um, is, you know, just helping developers write code faster. We take that a step further where not only do we want to help your developers write code faster, but we also want to infuse AI and help, you know, the security professionals. We want to help the product managers. We want to be able to explain the vulnerabilities um, and beyond. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Super interesting. Uh, we can get into a lot of that, I guess, uh, <laughs> offline. Uh, talking a little bit about your role evolution, what was your role? How did, how has your role, I guess, evolved from uh, a BDR to um, you know an enterprise account executive at GitLab? Yeah, so you know, came into uh, GitLab as a as a BDR. Um, for those you know watching and and are thinking about tech sales or don't know much about it or you know want to understand a little bit more how it works a BDR is going to be that that landing spot um if you're you're just getting into um you know sales at you know technology company or, or a startup the majority of the time um so this looks like you know more of the outbound cold calling if there is you know um an inbound you know contact request you'll be the first line of contact for that customer um so it's really about you know understanding messaging having good communication you know, being creative in your outreach, you know, not wanting to, you know, not wanting to pester people, but, you know, really add value um, is, is the idea behind it. But that's that's what that role is. That's the first role that I had here. Um, you know, after a year long successful stint in that role, um, went to um, the inside sales role or, you know, account management role. So that was, you know, enterprise accounts um, where you're, you know, still supporting um, AEs, which was, that's, that's how the BDR role works. You're supporting, you know, maybe one or two or three, depending on how the, your organization is set up, um, you know, and helping them, you know, outbound in, and prospect into their accounts inside mm -hmm. sales role was more so, you know, doing things like renewals, um, you know, handling smaller opportunities that, you know, the AEs, you know, might be focused on the bigger ones, um, and doing that role. And then, also in about a, you know, for a, a year stint in that role, um, I had, you know, a lot of already connection with the current accounts and the patch that I'm currently in. So, you know, it made a lot of sense at the time. Um, I showed, you know, a lot of just a lot of grit. I showed that I, you know, 
understood the product, understood the you know territory that I was in, um, and I was able to to get an enterprise AD role. And this role yeah. is, you know, you're essentially the CEO of your own territory, right? So it's you know you're you're not asked to do everything yourself. You don't need to be the most technical person in the room, um, but you need to be you know well communicated. You're the face of the account. So if anything if anything goes wrong, if anything goes right, you know that's on the account executive. Um, the way I like to look at it is you know you're the quarterback in a way. Uh, you don't have to do everything, but, you know, if a customer wants to, you know, view one part of a project, you know, you bring it, you could bring in a certain product manager. You know, I work closely mm-hmm. with, um, you know, an aligned solution architect. Um, and there's, you know, a little bit of a team there helping, you know, a customer success manager. Um, and there's a little bit of a team there helping us, you know, all, all, you know, go towards the same goals. Yeah. Yeah. Because one customer might need something a little bit different and it's nuanced and you have to know that, you know, you can actually deliver um, and, and the company can, I guess, uh, write, write that check that needs to be cashed ultimately. Um, you mentioned something about, was that, was that? Yeah. You mentioned something about knowing the product, right? And, you know, I always say to, you know, all of our business development managers at, uh, Key Renter, for example, it's, it's so important to know our service, know our systems understand our, you know, standard operating procedures or in our general philosophy on how we manage assets so that we can clearly communicate that to our prospective uh, uh, clients. Um, I'm guessing the same, of course, is, uh, applies here in this situation, right? How, how, you know, important is it to know the product so well in and out um, to where you can communicate it to, to whoever's buying it? It's important. Um, I think you need to know enough, you know, with a product like GitLab, it spans so many, so many different pieces. It touches so many different personas. Um, you know, it's unrealistic to think that you can, you know, totally know in depth how everything works, you know, especially behind the scenes. So, you know, the good thing about a company like GitLab and, you know, probably most other similar, you know, uh, technology companies is, you know, they're set up in a way that you have the resources at your disposal that you need, um, you know, to show growth. In terms of knowing your product, you need to know just enough about what a customer's pain, pain points are going to be, right? At the end of the day, sales, what I do, it's just helping people. People have, people have problems. People want to get faster. People want to get more efficient. Um, my goal isn't to sell them something that they don't want. My goal is to, you know, present an opportunity for them to, to get more efficient, to get faster, to get better, um, to, to solve their problems, right? So when it comes to knowing the product, you need to know enough to say, oh, you know, we've encountered you know, or some other customers have encountered a problem similar to yours, you know, tell me how X, Y, and Z is working for you. You know, knowing the right mm-hmm. questions to ask, knowing how to be consultative enough to, you know, get to the root cause of, you know, what might be causing, you know, some of the, some of the challenges that they have, um, if, if that makes sense. So I think it is important. It's important to know, you know, what space you're in. It's important to know, you know, what competing products and experiences that they might be having with them um, while at the same time, you know, you definitely don't need to be the most technical person in the room to, to do a role like this. Yeah. Love that. Uh, also important to know what you don't know. Right. And very important. Yeah. You de- I, I definitely don't want to go down the path of, you know, try, you know, you're, we're, we're on the, we're, you know, everyone who we talk to is going to be a lot smarter than we are. And, or, or I should say they go a lot deeper into the technology, um, mm-hmm. at least than I do. Um, but, you know, on every call, you know, I'll have a, you know, a solution architect with me who, you know, can speak the, you know, the technical language and, you know, who can troubleshoot even deeper. And then, you know, a level beyond that, if there is a need to bring in, you know, somebody from product or engineering, um, you know, that's, you know, the company is set up that we're able to do that too. That's awesome. Yeah, definitely. Uh, giving the, the the tools, resources, and just, you know, the weapons to go out and, and, you know, hunt for the business and help clients. And add value. Exactly. Because that's what it's about. about. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about uh, sales strategies. Can you share some of the successful sales strategies um, that you've implemented at GitLab and, you know, that have helped you consistently exceed these uh, quotas? Yeah, I mean, so there's two ways of looking at that. There's, you know, the sales strategies that we deploy, you know, right now and working with our current customers. And then there's also, you know, things that I still, you know, utilize on a daily basis. That's, you know, a little bit more of like the outbound motion, right? So if we're mm-hmm. talking about from outbound perspective, it's, you know, how do you do an effective cold call? How do you do an effective, you know, email campaign? You know, how do you how do you be creative um, and you know create, you know, content or, or whatever that is uh, to get in front of you know the people. Um, from an outbound perspective, 
if it, you know the truth is i think it's all about just being fearless and not being able you know not being afraid to go out um and reach directly out not being afraid to to pick up the phone um and make the call that you're afraid of not not being afraid to send that you know linkedin message um that's where i've had you know a lot of you know the success is just you know showing that fearlessness and you know not not being afraid you know if if you believe that your product can actually add value you have nothing to be you have nothing to be afraid of um it, that's a big part of it yeah. Um, we, on the, you know, sell side on the, you know, AE side, you know, we, we, we use medic, um, which if you're unfamiliar is just a sales framework. It's almost like a checklist of things. You know, you need to understand the metrics you need to understand, you know, the paper process, economic buyer, um, things like that. Um, command the message is one that we learn, um, specifically at GitLab too, which is, which is just a really good way of, uh, framing, um, the conversation. And one that I definitely implore if you're, you know, looking at this and interested in sales, um, definitely go, you know, check that out. And that could be a whole, you know, five hour long, you know, session as well on, on how that works. Yeah. Love that. Um, let's talk about customer relationships a little, what are the key principles for building, uh, and maintaining strong customer relationships in the world of sales? Yeah. I mean, I think it takes time. Um, definitely. Right. I mean, you're talking to a person, so I think it's, you know, there's, there's always a personal touch involved. They need to, you know, they need to, you know, trust you as, you know, having their best interest in mind. Um, but for me, it's just, you know, keeping that consistent, keeping the consistent contact um, for me, you know, in person and trying to get out in the field and, and you know, taking customers out, you know, face to face, especially, you know, coming out of the coming out of COVID, I think is more important than ever. And something that, you know, I'm definitely personally putting more of an emphasis on as we get into, you know, the second half of our fiscal year, um, have a you know number of, you know, on site engagements ready. Um, but it's really all those things. It's, you know, being, you know, there, there, there's a sense that the customer could have if they know if you're being, you know, helpful and genuine. And I just try to be, you know, honesty all the time, you know, keep their best interest in mind and and then definitely, definitely uh, getting out in person and, and seeing customers. Yeah, super important. Um, love that. Let's talk about CRM utilization. How do you effectively utilize your customer relationship management tools uh, to manage and enhance those relationships and sales processes. You know, there's a, there's a tech stack, right. At, a, at yeah. probably company, um, you know, we use, we use a CRM, you know, mainly for tracking, staying organized. I think, you know, I see the value of it. Um, you know, a lot of it is for, and which is also just as important for, you know, leadership to get that, you know, bird's eye view across what's happening across, you know, the entire country, across the entire territory, and then, you know, beyond. So I definitely see the value of it. Um, I think that is one of the bigger value of it, you know, just updating, you know, next steps and, you know, keeping everyone aware on your forecasting to make sure that, you know, the leadership has what they need to go out and make, you know, their forecasts. Um, I definitely see it. And then just from on the rep side of you, you know, the more organized you could stay. I mean, I'm I'm still I'm still OG. I still write a lot of my stuff down in, in a book when I have, you know, to do lists and whatnot. A lot of it does go um, in the, you know, into um, our CRM, but, you know, it's all it's all important. Yeah. So just expanding on that a little bit, how do you balance, uh, um, you know, going after high value tasks and high value conversations and being a CRM desk jockey as a sales, you know, representative or, uh, or an account executive, right? Because you could get buried in, in the CRM and, you know, there's a lot of intricacies and nuances and, you know, information in there. Um, right. And I always tell my, my team, right? Go, go out, have those high value conversations, take notes, send them to, um, you know, one of our remote team members and have them, you know, put them in the system and organize everything for you. And, you know, there's a saying in, in our team is if it messes up your happiness, don't do it. Train someone, train a remote team member to do it so that you can be more efficient with your time. Right. But how do you, Michael at GitLab, balance that CRM desk jockey? uh, versus those high value conversations and, and high value tasks. Yeah. I, I think, I think in my perspective, I actually, I'll actually go against the grain here and saying that, you know, updating the CRM being, staying organized, just, you know, making notes, you know, getting all, everything that's happening in my brain and, you know, my, my to-do list that is just constantly floating around that I'm sure everyone has just like, you know, I'm, I'm on this call and I'm just like thinking in the back of my head, oh, I need to do X, Y, and Z. I need to reach out to, to this person. I need to, you know, go chase uh, this. I can't, I can't forget to do X, Y, and Z. I just think it's a little bit of a, um, you know, it's one of those things where actually I think the more I invest in the, you know, taking notes, being as organized as I can be, 
you know, updating my next steps, understanding what I have out there, understanding what can come in and, and what I'm still waiting on. I think actually the more effective I am at doing all of the other stuff. Um, so I think if anything for me, it's like, you know, I need to, I need to, you know, kick myself into not being lazy in the, you know, updating the CRM and being as prescriptive um, as I can be in that. Because if anything, I think it leads to just better conversations and, and just a better customer experience later on. So I, you know, yeah. but I don't, you know, no, nothing falls through the cracks. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, even if it's that little personal tidbit about, you know, the customer says they're moving or, you know, they're celebrating something, totally. you know, something exciting is happening in their life, putting that in the CRM so that you can float it up later, um, definitely builds uh, rapport and helps uh, establish better relationships. Um, you, you mentioned this earlier just a little bit. Can you talk to me about outbound sales? What are some of the most effective outbound sales techniques? that you've used to reach potential clients. You mentioned, um, you know, being fearless, being creative. How do those come into play? Yeah, the truth is, I think when it comes to, to outbounding, and it's something that I'm sure every rep, especially in an economic climate that we're in, you know, right now is dealing with just how to fill the pipeline and how to, you know, keep the next deal coming. Um, is something that everyone's thinking about. The truth of the matter is, especially as it pertains to company to company, but even, you know, within, you know, a company like GitLab, I don't think there's a magic bullet, right? The company that you're talking, the customer that you're prospecting to um, is going to be totally different than, you know, another one. So, you know, with that, there's not a magic bullet. I think it's, I think the truth is the only thing that you really have as your asset is just the tenacity and the grit to, to continue to do it. Can you make, can you make your messaging better? Can you, can you play with your, your cold call scripts and can you play with your, you know, email scripts and, you know, create, um, you know, a new creative way to, you know, try to, you know, attack, you know, get somebody's eyeballs and try to, you know, get an executive to hear you out. Of course, mm -hmm. there, there, there's always a new, um, you know, spin you can put on on a message. Um, but the truth is, like I said, there's not a magic bullet. It's just about being fearless, being consistent. And there's also, you know, the more, you know, the I think the more you bang on the door, the more good luck you have too. So I think it's a little bit of a little bit of both in the, in the outbound sales game. Um, so I don't yeah, know if that question with like what are the exact strategies i mean there are um you know there are some but if i mean the biggest one is just doing it right the biggest one is just like get out and, and do it um the yeah. worst thing that can happen is you, you get a no um and a Don't no isn't a no a no is just like not right now it's another way that won't work right and and if you and if you do yeah. it professionally right i mean there's a lot of companies that are you know in my territory that you know i know who the main stakeholders are they know who I am. The timing isn't right. You know, every six months I might send them a little note, like, Hey, here are some updates. Here's what we're up to. Um, you know, it's, 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 yeah. it's being available. It's being ready, right. In sales. I think you succeed, you know, you need the talent, you need to know your stuff. You need to be ready to play ball, but you also need the timing and you also need the territory to do it. Um, so it's really just about putting yourself in a position to succeed um, is the most important thing that you can do uh, when it comes to outbounding. Yeah. Love that. Uh uh, let's talk about the biggest day-to-day -day challenges that you face in the, the world of sales and how do you overcome them? Day-to-day -day challenges. I mean, there's a, there's a new fire every day. Um, GitLab has a world-class support team that I did, you know, that really does a, a great job in helping those, but, you know, you know, customers, you know, they, they have issues, you know, challenges pertaining to, you know, just building pipeline um, are always, you know, present. Um, there, you know, there's always, you know, there's always competitors. It's a very competitive field. There's, you know, you know, since I got to GitLab three years ago, um, you know, the only constant that there has been is, is change. Um, it's the only thing that you could expect, you know, new products, new, you know, new things. AI has taken, you know, the industry by storm and it's, you know, all people can talk about. I'm sure everyone sees that, you know, in the news um, and whatnot. So it's really just, um, you know, there are challenges that you can face and from a, a mental level, it's, you know, just staying informed, you know, staying mm -hmm. up to date on on high spot and reading and, you know, knowing what our most recent offerings are, I think, you know, at lunch going on a run and just taking time in between meetings to, you know, you know get outside and, and go on a quick uh, walk. Um, just mental health wise has been very important, you know, continuing to treat my body right. And just having the right mind um, in my opinion is just as important, you know, and, and yeah, you know, less as much investing into your, you know, into your targets and, uh, you know, as you can be. Um, yeah. I remember, I'm, I remember seeing you running around downtown all the time uh, around lunchtime and I'd send you a text that I spotted you. Um, let's talk a little bit about, you know, those challenges. How do you adapt to, you know, 
working remote and, you know, how has that influenced your sales approach and strategies? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, GitLab is entirely remote or are there, is, are there centralized offices? Yeah, GitLab is a 100% remote company. Yeah, nice. So uh, w- what are the challenges with that? And um, how do you overcome them? Or how do you adapt to working remote? Yeah, I mean, yeah, at a, you know, at a remote company, I think it's easy to feel siloed at some point. But luckily, you know, there's an amazing team. The way GitLab views it is, you know, there, there's an open door policy. So, you know, people definitely take advantage of, you know, putting, you know, 20 minutes, 25 minutes on somebody's calendar for a coffee chat. Um, I do donuts, which are like they randomly pair you with people who are not in your organization just to meet. Um, there's, you know, I, I try to see customers as much as I can too, which you know keeps me, you know, getting out. But the truth, and but from a working remote perspective, it's just you know getting out, hopping around. Um, you know, if I you know don't have a really heavy meeting day in, in an afternoon, you know, I'll go you know work from a Starbucks or, or a coffee shop. Um, a co- I haven't done the co-working space in a couple months now, but was have been thinking about you know renewing that, um, renewing that membership and just you know being around people and you know taking calls from there and and really bouncing around. Um, but the truth is, it's you know really just about the people internally, right? You, just because mm-hmm. you're remote doesn't mean you can't you know build relationships and learn from your team members. Honestly, I think a lot of the success that I've had um, at GitLab is just because is just due to you know just wanting to be a sponge, wanting to learn what other people are you know doing well and what i can learn from them you know not being afraid to ask for you know mm-hmm. formal worship right like my manager um great relationship he's you know always wanting to give me the time you know explain how things you know always wanting to strategize on you know how i should respond to to x y and z um same thing with you know a number of of different teammates old managers just old mentors um you know always just building you know that support system and just continuing to learn more yeah Nice. Despite it being remote, so open door policy is uh, probably an, an important an important aspect of uh, right. running a remote team. And and I think I, I think there's you know mentorship and you know building relationships internally, both from a career perspective, just from you know furthering your career, something that I advocate for, but also just from a knowledge standpoint. You know, there's there's you know the knowledge of 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 everybody is going to be greater than the knowledge of one. So. You know, mm-hmm. keep up those relationships with, you know, you know, Matt Petrovic, Matt Malcolm, BG, you know, just a couple of the people, you know, internally, um, to name a few, you know, just continue to learn from them. My knowledge has skyrocketed just from, you know, wanting to, you know, be inquisitive, you know, wanting to get better, wanting to, you know. Yeah, love it. Let's uh, talk about some industry trends that you're noticing. What are uh, some of the current trends in the software development lifecycle industry that sales professionals um, should be aware of without giving away any trade secrets to your competitor. Um, what are we looking at? It's a, it's, it's a dense question. Um, and one yeah. that, <laughs> and one that I'll probably at, at a high level lead to the lead to the more technical folks, but you know, things that I see just generally speaking, um, you know, AI, I think pretty much every report, I don't want to, I don't want to make up a fake number. Um, a fake percentage, but it feels like the vast majority of companies are either have already adopted, you know, AI for help, um, or are going to continue, um, or or plan to do so, you know, within the next, you know, call it year or two. Um, so that's yeah. definitely going to be one that's going to, you know, add a lot of efficiency to it. Um, I think just generally speaking, consolidation. Um, you know, I, I mentioned a little bit earlier that you know all of those pieces of the software development lifecycle, um, you know, could be its own, you know, application. It could be its own tool. Um, but, you know, I believe that, you know, tool sprawl is a threat to, you know, innovation. It slows things mm-hmm. down, um, you know, creates more manual handoffs that are a lot harder to work through. Um, so I think what you're going to see is the industry continuing to, to consolidate, um, you know, large companies wanting to have less vendors, not more, um, you, know, while, you know, while adding efficiency and saving money, right? Cost saving is definitely a huge, um, you know, a, a huge initi- initiative um, for a lot of companies. Um, so things like that. I also saw just like randomly, um, you know, companies going back to the private cloud from public cloud. I don't know how true that is, but is one that I'm, you know, keeping an eye on too. Um, so interesting. So they're internalizing all their uh, all their uh, servers and their storage and uh, keeping everything. Uh, I guess storing everything themselves aside, instead of going to uh, public clouds. That's what a that's what a recent article that uh, a peer sent me from from Dell said. But Dell wants that to happen. So. Yeah, that's uh, that's something to keep an eye on for sure. Uh, 
let's talk a bit about future goals um, and potentially also, you know, what you would recommend for anyone who wants to get into the world of sales, whether it's in just, you know, uh, sales of whatever. It could be tech. It could be, um, you know, it could be real estate. It could be cars. It could be whatever, right? Um what are your current future goals for GitLab uh, or at GitLab and how do you plan to achieve them? Um, and what would you recommend to someone who wants to break into the industry? Yeah, in terms of my future goals, I think just continue to, you know, do what I'm doing, add value for, you know, the company, you know, be a good, you know, be a good teammate, you know, continuing to spread knowledge um, as it comes, cont continuing to better myself. Um, GitLab has a, a learning and development budget that I just recently talked to my manager last week on wanting to, you know, take, I took a course last year on cloud and DevOps, but, you know, wanting to, you know, do that and invest more in my own, you know, just knowledge and continuing to, to get better um, while also, you know, just continue to focus on my customers, making sure that they're having as good of an experience as they can, you know, continuing to support them um, and continuing to just grow out the territory um, more than it already is. Um, so that's really my main goal, just, you know, bunker down, add value, and uh, and get better. Yeah, yeah. Just for, for my every employee at GitLab has this uh, that has this fund that they can tap into to for continuing education. Yeah, that, yeah. They have access to um, an L and D budget. I think it refreshes every year. Another cool thing about GitLab, if you are just generally curious, we have a uh, you know totally open handbook um, where this is all public information. You know, not going to go any trade secrets here. Where you know you can get a lot of just knowledge. Everything that we do is open source. Um, so, you know, truly a company that, you know, lives its values, which is, which is really cool to see, um, in terms of breaking into tech sales, it's, you know, just, just be fearless. They're, they're sales jobs. Companies always are going to need salespeople. At the end of the day, salespeople are the ones bringing in the money. Um, so it's, you know, not being afraid to go in there, not being afraid to be confident, not being afraid to pick up the phone that goes for, you know, potential future employers, um, that goes for, you know, prospects that goes for someone who might be selling their house or needing a uh, property management service. Um, you know, there's a million reasons, but, um, you know, get really knowledgeable, know, know your product, know your industry. Um, and then, you know, don't be afraid, be fearless. Yeah. Love that. Michael, thank you so much for uh, joining me today, sharing your insights and, and uh, talking about your experience at GitLab. At GitLab. This was uh, absolutely invaluable. Awesome. My pleasure. Anyway, can, can I do one more thing? Sure. Dial Lyle. Boom. Shout Dial out. Lyle. Yeah, that's for Chris Lyle, for sure. For Lyle. Absolutely. <laughs> Hope you're doing well, man. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Same Day Podcast. Tune in to a new show each week and be sure to subscribe to get future episodes.